everybody, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we are mostly empty at the moment uh, because of the fact that we do have spray foam insulation set up to come in a couple days. So before we get that all done, I wanted to give you guys a quick rundown of the electric. You can see everything, all the guts of everything before the spray foam goes over. And of course I'll do a video on the spray foam once it's done. Um, uh, hopefully we'll have that here, here shortly. Pretty excited to get that all done. So. Uh, but, uh, like I said, today's video is going to be about the electrical system, we won't go too crazy with it, but uh, just give you guys a quick rundown of what I've got, and uh, hopefully it helps somebody out with setting their shop up, maybe you'll learn some things to do, maybe you'll learn some things not to do, so uh, let's take a look uh, at what we've got. Alright, here is our electrical panel, we have 100 amp service coming in, uh, got quite a bit of, got a number of spots here available so that we can add um, extra slots later if we need to. We made sure when we put it in that there was there was extra spots. So um, uh, we have three 220 outlets. One of them is a 30 amp that is right here below the breaker because uh, that was quick and easy to do. Um, we have an out, at exterior light, which is this switch here. Um, and it is just a basic outdoor light just so we can see everything at night. I'm going to change that over to a smart switch because I really like having those and then I can turn that light in and on, in and off, ugh, on and off. Let's try that uh, from inside the house. That way, if I'm coming out, I can just turn it on real easy. So um, these switches here are for our fan controls. We've got two fans um, and we'll take a look at these. Basically, these rotate around. They'll go either direction. Um, and like I said, we've got two of them. There's the one that's not spinning and there's the one that is. They definitely seem to be moving a little bit of air. Uh, already like it. I'm looking forward to when we have the insulation and the, the air conditioning running or when we have the heat going in the, in the winter time. Hopefully they'll move some air around. They do have a little bit of wobble, but it, it's not a big deal. So and like I said, we have the second one. So we turn it on and, and uh, it's pretty quick. I definitely like having the, the wall switch. Uh, I was hoping to find a remote, but I was a lot happier uh, when I found ones that had wall switches with them. So these are just basic utility fans, no lights or anything, because, well, I have plenty of lights, so I'm not too worried about having those, and I don't like different colored lights up there. So um, along the edge of the wall, um, well, at the top of the wall is there, where, that, uh, where the wall and the ceiling meet, I've taken those lights down on both sides because of the fact that, well, the spray foam insulation's going, and because of that, we can't have the lights up. Um, so once that's up, then I'll get up and get those mounted. Now the other ones, yes, they are up there and we're having spray foam put in, but uh, the chains that are up there, I'm gonna have put in behind the insulation on those. Those can actually hang down. And then, um, you know, in the future, if I ever do need to take them down, I can just cut the chain and leave it inside the insulation. Not a big deal. And with the chain, these are gonna hang basically exactly like they are now. So um, go ahead and turn these fans off since you can kind of see that. I was talking about this 30 amp uh, 220 outlet, and that is designed, basically, uh, we did that for a small heater that we have, um, just a floor heater with it, um, to kind of help take the chill off, you know, when it gets really cold. And I'll look at getting a kerosene heater or something like that. So um, over here, um, we had an outlet put in there, and that's a plug-in for one of, our, one of our cameras that we have at the moment. Um, and then we have these switches here. This is actually a dummy switch. They couldn't find a uh, blank that just had the square on it. The electricians couldn't. So they went ahead and just put a dummy switch in. Doesn't do anything. However, these are Casa smart switches that I really like. They work with the, uh, the uh, Echo lady over there. Um, so we can turn that on and off from inside the house too, which is really nice. And they're rocker switches, which are really nice. So, um, and again, they're Wi-Fi, so it makes it really nice. So down here at the bottom, uh, down here, and it kind of gets jumbled up. You can kind of see up there. We have ethernet cable that was ran and I actually mounted the box up there. Um, I'm planning on putting a shelf up in this area and there's our router for the moment. Um, uh, once all the insulation's done and everything, we start putting walls up, then, um, we'll put a shelf and have that organized up there. So that'll be our, our, router where everything comes in and then I'll do a hub off of that so we'll have uh, um, uh, Ethernet going to our computer and to the TV and that kind of stuff with it um, run fire sticks on the TV so definitely want the the high-speed internet out here which is really nice so um, to come back over here um, well we don't need to go over there let's go back over here um, on each wall we had three outlets put in so over the workbench area, 
they went ahead, the electricians actually recommended putting um, the four pots in there. So we went ahead and did those on the workbench side. That is actually my one regret already, as everybody already said, has told me in all the research that I did online, you will want more outlets and I already want more outlets. Now these are fine having the four here. Um, again, there's the other one there. However, the other ones that we put in, that was kind of hidden a little bit at the moment, I should have done fours on these. That's probably the main thing that I would have changed. Um, if I had the option to go back and change anything, I would change these over to fours. And yes, I can change them over to fours. That's not a big deal, but um, that's something I would have had the electricians do to begin with. They were already in there and wire and everything. And they've been great, so it would have been nice to do that. And of course, we've got GFCI outlets on the uh, on the first runs, how they, how they set it up with it. And again, we'll step over here. And that's directly in the center of the back wall. We got our beat up Ninja 500 over here. Another one there. So again, that's three along the whole back wall. So that's a 30 foot run there with three outlets. And then um, this is the opposite wall uh, from the first one, one of the 24 foot walls. Uh, and again, we did three regular outlets here, but we also added the 220 here for the welders. Um, we actually have two of those, one here, and then one in the middle between the two doors um, where we also have another outlet over there too. Um, we'll get back over to this wall, but basically, so we have two 220s so that I can plug the welder in and with the leads and everything. Um, you know, this is gonna be where our welding table is gonna be over here near the air compressor. You know, this is kind of our little fab station kind of thing as much as there can be in here um, and as much as I'm capable of doing. So, um, uh, so we need the 220 over here because that's where the welder's gonna live. But if I need to weld on motorcycles or anything, you can, I can plug in over here. I also have an extension cord. So basically I can get just about anywhere in the shop that I need to between these two plugs and the extension cords that I have. So uh, for the 220 cords with it. So, um, so we'll go back over here. Again, another one of the cameras we have set up at the moment. Um, those all gotta get changed around, but um, there's one more plug over here in this corner, which will be really nice having the, the dual plugs here near the welding stuff. Um, and the compressor's in a bad angle at the moment, but it is all wired up. It is run directly through. It doesn't go through that box. It's just uh, uh, zip tied up basically at the moment for the spray foam insulation. Uh, so it's got a spot to go through. So. Um, one of the things that they really worked on uh, for me that I, I really needed was to make sure that on these wires, you can see them running along that two by four a little bit. They did them before all that was put in, most of it. Where it runs up at the top, we tried to make sure that any spot that it needed to cross over on those beams, that they went ahead and um, did it as close to the top as they could or rather the most inconvenient or most convenient spot uh, for us to be able to put walls up later. The top is most likely just going to be metal, but you know, if it, if the metal crosses over here or even down through here, it makes it very hard to get either plywood or sheetrock or whatever is going up there. So, um, up here at the top of the wall, it's a little probably easier for you to see than it is for me down here. Um, that is another outlet and that is one that runs our lights that are on the edges. Like I said, those aren't up right now. They're not plugged in at the moment, but you can see at the end of this row of lights that they plug in directly into there and they're wired to a switch as we talked about the Casa switch with it. Um, uh, so therefore I can hit the light switches and just turn them directly on. And if we ever have a problem with one burning out or anything, they're easily replaceable. These are Honeywell lights that I picked up from Sam's Club and um, they were about 20 bucks a piece. And the most part I bought about one every couple weeks uh, until I had all of them that I wanted, and then they all link together, as you can see through there. So we only have the one plug in at the end, but these all link together. So one plug goes over to the switch, you flip the switch, the whole row goes out. So what we had them wire up was the outer lights, which are not there on both sides, go off of one switch. So you flip one switch and just the outer lights come on. Then the next set of switches or the next switch does the middle row, which you can see, sorry, the, well, yeah, the middle row here. Um, it does these outer lights here and here. So those are on one single light switch. And then the main row through the middle of the shop here, 
that is on its own switch. You can come in, if you're just coming in to grab something and it's dark out, you can just throw one switch. You got plenty of light to see everything in here. And then if you're working in here, depending on what you're doing, it's well lit now and we, we're missing 10 lights at the moment. So, um, so again, there's plenty of light in here, uh, just depending on what you need with it. So, um, so again, that's our switches and that's the Honeywell lights. Um, again, back to this wall, we have uh, between the two, two doors, we have uh, the 220 that's there, um, which is a 50 amp to run the welders. And then again, we've got the, the 110 outlet there. Um, this is also where my uh, extension cord reel will mount, be right along this two by four, so that I've got an extension cord reel um, that I can run anywhere in the shop. So uh, gives me extra electrical. I don't have it hooked up at the moment. Sorry about that. But this plug was put in. It's it's up. It's probably about eight feet up in the air, give or take. And the only reason that it is there is because we installed that exhaust fan, uh, which was just an inexpensive exhaust fan off of Amazon. Um, uh, basically, we got it just to get the fumes out of the shop. Uh, for the most part, it's. It, it, uh, it's just gonna be used to get like gas fumes, welding fumes, you know, that kind of stuff out of the shop. It's not really designed for heating and cooling. It does suck some heat out. And if you're really wanting to kind of help control the heat, what I'd recommend is either getting a bigger size. This one is small. I think it was designed for about 400 square feet, if, if I remember correctly. Um, and this is 720 just square feet, not counting the course the the height and everything with it so this was not designed to heat and cool which is not what I wanted it for I, it's already made a difference um, with getting the fumes out and that stuff with it so um, so I'm pretty happy with it um, and again it plugs into the 110 outlet and it's got a temperature control um, and an on off switch you can leave it on all time and just set it to a pre-done temperature but I don't that's not what I have it for so um, for now I just plug it in with the um, uh, with it turned on. So I just walk over and hit the switch and it turns on when I need it on. So, and then I leave it on. Um, forgive the uh, insulation out there. And uh, I just did that with some spray foam to kind of fill in the, the holes up there. So as you can kind of see there, uh, it should look better in the next couple days. So um, let's go outside and take a look at that though. So you can just see what it looks like from the outside. All right, here we are outside. I can't turn the vent on, but there's the, the vent fan. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit so you can kind of get an idea of it here. The sun's up there, so I'm trying not to blind you. Um, and we just did a quick mount, cut it out, siliconed it in, and then of course used the spray foam around it. And, uh, and like I said, it worked well. We turn on the fan, vent's open, works great. So, um, so anyways, that's our vent fan. Let's head back inside. All right, we're back inside. Basically, just to kind of take a look at all of this wiring they've got run up here. Um, they did a good job putting the metal braces to kind of force everything back. When I do the, um, when I cover up the walls, I'll have to figure out a, a good way to do that. But again, once the spray foam insulation goes in, it's going to look a lot better anyways. It's 4 o'clock p.m. Uh, so, that's most of our electrical stuff with it. The next thing we've got we can take a look at. Pretty much the last thing I've got in here, uh, probably worth noting, is the mini split. It is a Daikin mini split, 24,000 BTU. It uh, has heat and air with it. Um, when it gets really cold, below freezing, I did not realize that basically it's a heat pump and they don't really work in, uh, in freezing cold temperatures, uh, which is fine. That's why we have the extra heater with it. So um, again, it was, had this professionally installed because, well, I wanted the warranty for parts and labor and all of that. And well, this was something that I didn't want to take the time to do. So I just paid somebody to do it. There's plenty of DIY kits that are out there. A lot of, lot of, um, a lot of people that have done it. So you can look up how to install these yourself if you want. I definitely recommend paying somebody if you, if you can, just because of the fact that, well, that way, you know, it's, it's done properly. So, um, this is the blower unit on the inside. It's not turned on right now. Um, uh, cause I don't really need it at the moment. So with the fans, with the doors open, the temperatures we've had recently, it just doesn't need to be running right now. So, uh, but let's take a step outside and we'll, uh, we'll take a look at, at the rest of the unit out there. This is the line set for the outside of the unit. Um, 
again, while the guys were here, they talked to me about how I wanted to run this, and this is what I decided. I will probably be going back and painting this eventually. We'll see. Um, but that's the cover for the line set there. And then, of course, the line set we had run right out here, and the drain dumps back here around the corner. Pardon, I had need to mow the grass. I have this rye grass, and it grows really fast. About every four days, I have to mow this. And uh, I did not weed eat and, and, and do it real quick last time. So, but... Anyways, enough about the yard. So here's the outside of the unit. You can see we had Dewey's AC, which is local, uh, um, come out and hook it up for us. And they came out when the electricians were doing the original so that they could get together and make sure that it was hooked up properly and there's cutoffs and everything for it. So, so far I've been very happy with it. Uh, once we get the insulation in, we'll, we'll really be able to see it a lot more. Um, as far as we'll be able to see how well it works. I already know it works well because you can turn it on and it's it's really cool So, um, So again, that's the mini split um, Daikin 24,000 they put it on a pad and like said I know I need to do the yard That's that's what I'm doing after I get done with this video Hopefully so again, there's the line set running down there So I did have a problem with the uh, lines because of the way that they're out there. We had some really bad weather um, I guess back in February March something I don't know uh it got down to negative eight degrees and the line set actually froze outside we actually had the same problem in our in our house too but that's not a problem that we have to worry about here if it's something that you know in freezing temperatures that you have to worry about uh where you are then I would recommend doing something different than just putting it along there because again if it stays cold very long around you it's probably going to freeze your line set so uh the one other thing I did not mention we had an exterior outlet of course it's gfci protected and everything covered up and all um it put on the outside because this pad that i'm actually standing on at the moment take a look back here it is a uh eight foot by 24 pad you can see you might have seen it in some of the other videos or in the in the thing um this is actually going to be set up for um where I can wash bikes, clean stuff, do work outside. Uh, we'll eventually put a pergola or something to cover this up out here. Um, but you can see in the afternoons, it doesn't matter because it's pretty shaded anyways, but um, uh, but we're still planning on doing that. So, um, and again, I wanted to be able to have an outlet out here so I can run the pressure washer or any type of cleaning stuff that I'm doing out here. Um, and it's it's been extremely helpful already. Uh, we've used it quite a bit. So. Well, thanks for tuning in everybody. That'll do it for this one. Um, uh, if you've got any questions on what I did or why it was done or how we did it, um, hit me up in the comments below. Let me know. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. And, you know, if you've, if you've got criticisms on what we did, let me know that too. I, I'm, you know, uh, suggestions on things I can do better. I'm, I'm definitely interested. So, um, again, thanks for tuning in. we got a lot more content that's going to be coming. Uh, spray foam insulation comes in a couple days. And, uh, We'll really get rolling in on some motorcycle projects and you know we'll still have a lot of shop set up stuff to do um organization and that kind of stuff so if you've got any suggestions on anything again with that let me know in the comments so all right guys well i appreciate you tuning in and you guys have a good day it's 4 10 p.m